Hey, I'm Deanna. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to be decorating my Christmas cards using handmade stamps. I'm going to test out different materials to make the stamps, as well as put them to the test with different products to see what gives the best result. I've got a potato, some craft foam, and a lino block. And I'll be crafting my stamps out of these items, so let's get started. And to cut these items, I'm going to be using a couple of knives, some scissors, and I've got a few lino block carving tools. In my sketchbook, I drew up some different ideas for simple Christmas trees. I'm going to make a variety of tree stamps so that I can stamp in clusters and layers. This is the paper I'm going to be making my Christmas cards out of, so when I cut my stamps, I'll just keep this size in mind. I'm going to start with the potato. This one's a russet. Start by cutting your potato in half, lengthwise, and both halves of the potato can be used as a stamp. Draw the outline of the tree on the potato, and then using a small knife, cut away the excess. Cut down about a quarter of an inch to help prevent the edges of the stamp from making marks. Now I'll make the foam stamp. Because this foam is fairly thin, I'm going to start by gluing a couple of pieces together to make a thicker stamp. Similar to the potato, take a pencil and draw the outline of your shape on the foam. Then using a pair of scissors, cut out the shape. And because the stamp might be a little bit hard to hold on to while I'm stamping, I'm going to glue it onto a block of wood. And now I'll do the lino block stamp. If you're not familiar with this product, it's linoleum and it comes in different shapes and densities. This one here is a medium density. It's a bit softer and it's fairly easy to carve. This one here is a harder density, which means that you can get a crisper line, but it usually requires a little bit more elbow grease to get your shapes. To start, I'll cut a piece of this bigger lino block down to size so that it fits my cards perfectly. Similar to the potato and the foam, you could use a pencil to freehand draw, but for this one, I'm gonna use a ruler to help get even spacing. Freehand drawing on your lino block is great for those simple shapes, but if you'd like to do a more intricate design, I've got a couple of tips for you. I like to start with a printed image to use it as a guide. I've got a saying here printed out, how lovely are thy branches? And you might notice that the words are printed in reverse. This is done intentionally. Start by flipping the paper over and laying it face down. So you're just seeing the white backside of the paper. Next, I take a piece of graphite and on the backside of the paper, I'll rub the graphite over the entire surface where the image is. If you don't have a graphite stick, you could also use a pencil. Now I'll trim away the excess paper. I've got the denser lino block here, and I'm going to lay my design face up into position on the lino block. And then using a piece of painter's tape, tack it into place. Now take a pencil or a pen and trace all of the contours of your design with firm pressure. The graphite on the back side of the paper will transfer onto the lino block, leaving an outline of where you need to cut. Now that I've got both of my lino block designs drawn, I'm ready to cut them out. And I'll be using these lino block carving tools. I'll get started with the softer, thicker lino block. Use the knife to carve away the excess. These carving tools are like a knife, but the tip is shaped like a V. And you can get different shaped tips that will produce different cuts. On this design, I'm going to be cutting out the letters as well as the circles. 
I'm doing this because I think it'll look good, but also I think it'll be easier to cut out the letters rather than trying to cut out all of the space around the letters. My stamp will actually be a circle and the letters will end up being the same color as the paper. My four stamps are done and I'm ready to put them to the test. A couple of quick observations before I jump into testing them out. The potato was really easy to carve and everyone probably has a knife at home and a potato is pretty inexpensive so I think this would be the most cost effective option and the most accessible. I did notice that it started turning brown though as it's been sitting here so one thing I would do next time is I would carve the potato just before I'm ready to stamp. Now I don't think that'll affect the quality of the stamp but the edges are getting a little bit soft so we'll find out. I really liked cutting the foam. It was super easy to work with, but as I mentioned, it was a bit thin, so I'm glad that I doubled it up. I'm wondering almost if I should have triple layered it, but I'll find out when I get to stamping. The softer density Lionel block did cut very easily, but I found that it was hard to get a crisp line, and I had a bit of trouble in some of these edges here getting a really sharp detail. I don't know if that's gonna show up when I'm stamping, but time will tell. And then finally, the hard density Lionel block. This one cut very nice and crisp and it was perfect for these tiny little letters. It was hard to cut, so I did have to push pretty hard. And what that meant was a couple of times I slipped, but I was able to correct my mistake and it all turned out in the end. I'm not sure if I carved this one deep enough, so I guess when I'm stamping, I'll see if there's an impression from these tinier letters. If not, I might have to go back and do a second pass over those spaces. Let's start with chalk paint. I'm gonna be using Amsterdam Green. I'm using chalk paint because it's a very versatile paint that I really enjoy working with for crafts and furniture refinishing. But you could also use acrylic paint or tempera paint Get a little paint on the brush and I'm using a stiff bristle craft brush here and just paint it onto the stamp. Flip it over and then press the potato firmly into place. Next up, the foam block. Same thing as the potato, brush the paint onto the foam. Next up, the softer lino block. And finally, the saying. I'm holding my brush flat, trying not to get paint into the letters. Next, I'm gonna give the Speedball Fabric and Paper Block Printing Ink a try. I'm using a brayer. This is to roll the ink. Use a smooth, hard surface to coat the brayer with the ink. I'll start again with the potato. Roll some ink onto the potato. Press into the paper. Next up, the foam block. and the softer lino block. And finally, the circle harder lino block. Now let's test the gold leaf. To apply gold leaf, you need gold leaf size. It's a special glue that stays sticky when it dries. I'm gonna try both brushing and rolling with the brayer. I'll start with my foam tree. Press it into the paper. And this size is clear so you can't really see it. And the softer lino block. Press the potato into the paper. And finally, the saying. Well, that didn't work. 
I'm gonna take this to the sink and wash the paper off right away. This glue has been sitting for about 15 minutes and when it dries it still feels a little sticky to the touch. The stamps cleaned up really easily with just some warm water and now I'm ready to give my gold leaf a try. So I'll take a piece of the gold leaf and we'll push it onto the paper. And you can kind of see an outline of the shapes here, maybe because there was a bit of green ink still in the stamp that wasn't washed off. But I'll try to just get the light to catch it here so you can see where the adhesive is. And I'm going to press my gold leaf into that adhesive. Now, this is imitation gold leaf, if you're wondering. I am not using real gold leaf. Imitation leaf looks just as beautiful and is a heck of a lot less expensive. And gold leaf also comes in sheets. I'm just using some gold leaf flakes. You could use the sheet and press the full sheet down and any flakes that break off, I just collect them and then reuse them for small projects like this. Now that the gold leaf is in place, take a soft dry brush and then just lightly rub to work the leaf into place. And it's gonna stick anywhere that there's enough adhesive. Now it seems that I maybe don't have quite enough adhesive here on this stamp, so I'm just using my finger actually to press a little more firmly than I normally would to get it into place. I had a lot of fun testing out these stamps. Now anytime I try a new technique, I like to do a test run just like I just did, especially if I'm making a gift or a card for someone so that I know what to expect because I do want to do a really great job. Before I move on to making my cards, let's take a look at the results and talk about some of the pros and cons. This is the chalk paint sheet. When I'm looking at my three trees, I don't really notice a difference in quality between the potato, the foam, and the lino block. They all sort of turned out the same. With brushing, you have to be careful not to get too much excess paint on the edges because it kind of does make these little blobs. You also do get some brush stroke lines, which adds a really interesting quality, and I actually like that. Now for my big round circle from the hard lino block, I didn't put nearly enough paint on, so if I were to do this again, I'd put a little more paint. Although I do really like the quality of the brush stroke marks that it left, maybe I'll just put the paint heavier around the words if I try that again. And here is the one with the block printing ink. Rolling the block printing ink seemed a little bit easier because it kept it nice and flat and I wasn't worried about the ink seeping in and creating little puddles around the fine details. Again, the quality of the stamp between the potato, the foam, and the lino block all kind of look the same. I really like how crisp the letters came out and again, I think that's due to the amount of product it had enough on here, but also rolling to get a nice even coat. And finally, let's take a look at the gold leaf. We'll start with the trees. So again, similar to the other results, not much of a difference between the foam, the potato, and the lino block. I definitely need to put a bit more of the adhesive, the glue on the stamp, because the paper soaked in quite a bit. And so here, there's a lot of bare areas where the gold leaf had nothing to stick to. Although I don't mind that broken appearance with the trees, I would like it to be just a little bit more solid. Now let's talk about the round stamp. I think because it's such a big flat surface, it just basically glued itself to the paper. So when I went to pull it up, it tore the paper back with it. I don't think it's a great option for doing the gold leaf with the big round stamp, although I thought it would look really cool. I'm going to just stick to the trees when trying the gold leaf on my Christmas cards. Now that I've had some time to play around, I'm going to jump right in and get making. To give myself a little bit more variety, I cut a couple more stamps. What I love about stamping and printmaking is the ability to make multiples of the same design. Yes, there is a little bit of work up front making the stamps, but once you have created them, it's a pretty fun and easy process to make the prints. This is perfect for Christmas cards or anything you want to make multiples of, like artwork or handmade gifts. Although today I'm showing you Christmas cards, these techniques could be used any time of the year. I'm all finished with stamping and I've got a few more tips I'd like to share with you while we take a look at my final cards. 
After all of this stamping, I learned a few things about each type of stamp. The potato would be a great option for someone who wants an inexpensive stamp, something that's readily available at stores, easy to find. My recommendation is once you cut the potato, do your stamping right away. It doesn't keep very well. I tried to keep it in the refrigerator overnight, but it kind of wilts and the edges sort of get rounded. And then the tip of one of my potato trees did break off. So good for someone who's maybe not doing a ton of stamping stamping, but it still did produce a really great looking tree. The lino blocks were awesome for the intricate details, especially that hard one was really easy to carve those fine words, but it was a little bit more effort than say a simple tree outline. So depending on the intricacy of your stamp, you might decide to go with the lino block. The foam I think is the winner for this type of project simply because it was easy to cut it held up really well, washed them several times, and I still have those to use again in the future. Most craft stores would have some craft foam and I just glued mine to a scrap piece of wood so it was easy enough to stamp and hold on to. The block printing ink took quite a while to dry. It had to sit for two full days. I tried doing some gold leaf a little too soon and then it was getting stuck in the block printing ink and I got a few smudges of green ink where I didn't intend to. And so if you do choose to go that route, just know it'll take a little longer for drying time. The chalk paint dried really quick and easy and I was ready to do one step after the next. And so you could get that done in one day. I'm curious to know what you thought about the different stamps. Head down to the comments and let me know which one will you give a try. Now let's take a closer look at my finished cards. These two here are basically the same, but a few subtle differences. Here I've applied a bit of copper leaf, and this one here I've got some gold leaf. And then on this one I took a Sharpie marker and just outlined the shape of the trees just to further add some interest and accentuate the shapes of the stamps. And these two here are very similar. This is one of the ones where I got a green smudge from that block printing ink, but instead of discarding it, I decided to just kind of cut out the shape and then I've stuck the cards onto these white pieces of cardstock that I trimmed to fit the envelopes. And it wasn't intentional, but now I think this one kind of looks like a moon behind the trees and I'm really happy with how it turned out. On the inside of this one, I decided to add just a little simple gold leaf tree for something extra special. And these two here are basically the same, but just playing around with gold leaf versus copper leaf. And I've also gone ahead and done the little tree on the inside for that little fun touch when your friend or your family member opens up their card. Here I've outlined the trees again with Sharpie. And on this one, I used a gold marker just to enhance some of the letters. Here I've just done a repetitive pattern with the same tree over and over and added in one silver leaf tree. This is just a little bit more of a modern look. I've also done some wrapping paper in the same style. I thought that was really cute. And this gold leaf tree on the tag. And then going with that sort of minimal look, I also did one card just really plain and simple here with the copper leaf tree on it. I've added some embellishment to this envelope. I just cut out one of my stamps and stuck it onto the front. You could also stamp the inside of the envelope or one stamp over the back after you seal it. You can really have a lot of fun with this. Keep in mind these techniques are not just for Christmas. They could be used any time of year on your paper craft projects. I really enjoy stamping and printmaking and I hope you'll give this a try. If you liked the video, remember to click the thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning more DIY techniques like this, remember to click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That's how you'll be alerted when I upload new videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you back here next time.